Today on Let's Wrap. He inspires me. All the trials and tribulations he's been through with his physical health and not letting it affect his mental state. I mean, it's not always been easy for sure, but he never really let it get to him or bring him down at all. Katie and Anthony's journey in learning about hemophilia started when they fell in love as teens. Their connection led them to be lifelong advocates and embody HPC's wraparound care. Today on Let's Wrap, we're talking with Katie and Anthony Richardson. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. And we do want to mention, Katie, you work for HPC. Tell me a little bit about your current role. Yes, I've been with HPC for the last three years. I am currently a regional hemophilia specialist. But we want to thank you for joining us. And uh, we're talking with you because I know your family has such a connection to hemophilia. And Anthony, uh, we'll start with you. I know you were diagnosed at birth with hemophilia. Can you tell me a little bit about your journey? I know it's the only the only life you've known, but what's that journey been like? It's been a long journey throughout the way of the journey itself. Uh, I feel like I've grown with hemophilia. I've also been able to help others uh, through the journey. Just like me and Harry, we, we've learned uh, new things about hemophilia and how to also help others. And you did not have any kind of family history that you know of, or so this probably caught your family by surprise? It was a very big surprise. We went down the line to try to find it through my grandma's side and my dad's side, and we couldn't find any relation to hemophilia at all. I know you're both from Oklahoma. Katie, you said you met when you were teenagers. Yes. How soon into when you met did the conversation about hemophilia, I'm sure you had a lot of questions as a, as a young teen. Um, I will say I was pretty ignorant because I was so young. So it was about a month into it. He was going to go on a family vacation with us to a lake house in the summer. So that's when he was like, okay, I've got to take this medicine. This is kind of what's going on. But I don't think me or my immediate family really had a grasp of what all it entailed. So I'm sure you've learned a a tremendous amount. And yes, when you first, you know, when he first told you, did you have certain misperceptions or maybe things that um, someone who doesn't know anything about hemophilia might think? Yes. And I remember certain questions like, will I catch it? Well, how did you get it? Well, how long will you have it? Certain things like that. We didn't ever really get into like the deep conversation of like, will our children have it? Because at 16, 17, that wasn't on top of our, (laughs) that was at the top of my list. But I just remember asking those questions and thinking back now, they sound so silly. But being a teenager, I had no clue what I was getting myself into. As you watched his journey and you've been a part of that, but what in particular sticks out about maybe the way uh, he inspires you or things he's overcome and the way he handles it? Um, I would definitely say that he inspires me. All the trials and tribulations he's been been through with his physical health and not letting it affect his mental state. I mean, it's not always been easy for sure, but he never really let it get to him or bring him down at all. He still has the same personality since so we were young. <laughs> And so let's fast forward to you have a daughter now, Briley. How old is Briley now? Briley is 11. Okay. And sh- explain her situation because we know more more males than females usually have it, but females can be carriers. Or can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes. So we originally were told that Briley was sick and they actually had her scheduled for a bone marrow um, extraction to check for leukemia. She kept getting bruises that wouldn't go away. The school was noticing the bruises. They were starting to get involved. We always were told she was going to be a carrier, but we were also always told that she wouldn't have any symptoms. She was just going to be fine until she chose to have kids on her own. So when we started having to go to the doctor more often and getting things figured out, we learned, you know, yes, she is a carrier, but she does have the levels of a mild, moderate And how do you treat that differently than uh, than Anthony? So Briley is actually a little different than, I guess, a lot of typical milds. She is so active in sports, things like that. She actually doses once a week on her busiest week. And then we will treat um, every time she gets hurt, any bumps, bruises, usually anything in the joint. We'll go ahead and treat her for... um, so she's all she's on demand, but she also has a profidose once a week. So she's kind of a different one. 
And would you say, you know, I know you work with HBC now, and um, are you able to use your personal experiences, both of you, just to help other families who may be dealing with, you know, a spouse or a child? I mean, you have vast experience that you can share what what you've learned and what you've been through. Yes. And our journey being married has not been the easiest. So it's always nice to be able to empathize with somebody and let them know that they are not alone and that we can go through all the emotions of being diagnosed, of your child being diagnosed, and we can we can be sad. It's okay to be sad because I was devastated when we found out about Briley. I mean, I've been devastated by some of the things that Anthony has went through. But as long as you don't stay in that sad state of mind, I think that's the, our biggest thing is we've always been able to go through the emotions as long as we didn't stay in them. As long as we were together, we knew we could do whatever we needed to. And so, Anthony, for you, have has it created in a way a, a special bond with Briley because you both can relate to that? Yeah. So like if she has a bleed or something in her joint, she'll come to me and she'll have me look at it and we'll kind of go through the motions of like, oh, this is how I would feel. Or, and she'd talk to me and I'm like, oh, how, how do I fix it? Like we'll do like rice. Uh, eyes compression and elevation and do our factor together and we kind of bounce stuff back and forth with each other all the time and with the advancements that they've made is it even um easier for her to participate in in sports and activities than even you i know each generation it gets a little better yeah it, it, it's actually a lot better now that the, the science has really changed a lot since i was younger when you talk to other families that are maybe shocked the way you know your parents were, what do you what do you tell them? What can you share with them uh, to help them in in their journey? Our biggest motto in our family was we we went back and forth. Do we allow her to play sports? Do we not? Anthony was never allowed to come in from that generation, so we always just made it a point to make it Briley's decision. She's the one that lives with it. She's the one that has to deal with the consequences. So it was almost as if you can do this if this is what you truly want. But we want you to be responsible enough to let us know when something is wrong. And if you are to get hurt, you will have to take your medicine. And to her, it's always been worth it. So that's just kind of the motto. We want her to be a kid. We want her to do everything other kids do. We don't want her to be different or people to see her as different. Um, We let her do everything. We just modify it a little bit. So that's just always kind of how we've taken that approach. And Anthony, do you think for you, is it easier to maybe let her go do those things or more difficult since you, you know the risks? Um, I think for me, how I feel was, you know, since I didn't get to do it, I would want her to do it. So that's more, this is a reward there itself. So. You would think he would be the one, don't let her do it. And it's actually the opposite. Yeah, yeah. And just being safe and, like you said, you know, practicing and and letting her make those um, decisions. So we've talked some about uh, kids and when they learn to infuse themselves uh, in in different episodes. Has she learned yet? And and what was that journey like? That's currently what we're working on because she went so many years where she didn't have to infuse. But now that she's getting older, she's learning to. And, I mean, it has its good days and its bad days. I mean, but we're rolling through it. We're hoping she'll be able to self-infuse by the end of the year. That's our goal. And do you remember when you, when you learned? Uh, I was about seven years old. I learned how to infuse at camp. I was a summer camp for hemophilia kids. And did they have the big stick award then? Yeah. That's We've talked mm-hmm. about that since. It, it was pretty awesome. Can you t- t- tell someone who doesn't know what the big stick is? Can you explain that? So the Big Stick Award is given to uh, each kid who learns how to stick themselves at camp each year. And then once you uh, you learn how, you go through all week and you stick yourself. And once you finally get it, you get the Big Stick Award. And once you, you get that, actually, at like an annual meeting and the whole community gets, gets to see you get it in front of everybody. What was that like for you? What what does that give a, a child? Um, Hope and definitely knowing that you'll be able to uh, take care of yourself in a situation where other people really couldn't do it. Otherwise, you'd have to go to a treatment center to get stuck and have like a nurse to it, or you could just 
be able to do it yourself. Katie, you've been with HPC for three years now. What drew you to HPC and what's the journey been like? HPC has been an amazing blessing to us. This was already our pharmacy before I chose to work here, but it has just been amazing being able to take our life experiences and everybody else's life experiences that we currently work with and just be able to be a friend, be a voice for some of these patients that don't know what they're doing, that could use it. I mean, at one point in time, we were one of the patients. We were trying to get things done, and we just had no place to start. We had no idea. So we just really want to be there for people to let them know that they're not alone and that if I don't know the answer, I'm sure one of us around here do, and that we will find it out. And I know the wraparound care model is such a big part of HPC. How have you seen it in action? Because it's more than just, you know, providing a factor. Yes. So we use it as an advocate day to day, just bringing in the whole team approach. Because like I said, if I don't know it, I'm sure somebody around here does, bringing in the nurses, the pharmacy staff, everybody. It's just so amazing to sit there and toss ideas back and forth to say, okay, this works for me. I mean, what are, you, what are your guys' thoughts? And just going around the room like that is amazing. I've learned so much from just different employees here at HPC. And Anthony, watching her be able to share her knowledge beyond your family, what has that been like? How would you describe, um, you know, how you feel about her work and, and what she's doing? And Oh, it's, it's really inspiring um, for me, like, she makes me proud. Um, and then what she's learned from me, she's given out to other um, families as well. Um, like She really loves what she does. You can tell she has a passion for it. Yeah, I think that's awesome. If you both um, come across a family and maybe they've, ju- you know, they've just been diagnosed, have a child, what advice would you give them from, from your learnings and how could you encourage them? Because I'm sure it's, it's terrifying and then the you know, the learning curve and, and can be really overwhelming in the beginning. I would just say it's okay not to be perfect all the time. They're going to fall. They're going to get the bumps and bruises no matter how much you try to protect them, how much you try to avoid them. Kids are going to be kids. And to just let them be kids. They only have one childhood, so let's not bubble wrap them and let's just let them have fun. Let them be kids. Do you get asked, Anthony, at times, like, well, how does you, how's your family handled it? What advice would you give parents who are new to this? Um, to definitely let their kids uh, be free. And just from your own experience with your daughter, you know, what would you what would you say to them to encourage them? On the um, anything's possible. Um, there is there's hope beyond just the the disease of hemophilia. It seems like it's the end of the world, but it's really can be a blessing as well. Well, is there anything else you'd both like to add? No, I just think that it's just become our normal routine and that and then we have one child that does not have hemophilia. So it's almost different. It's like I know how to treat a bleeder now and that sometimes I forget that they're not a bleeder. So it's like, oh, wait, we don't want to do all this for, for him. So it's just become part of our normal everyday life now. Well, we thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for taking time to be on Let's Wrap. You've been listening to HPC's Let's Wrap, a podcast by HPC Specialty Infusion for patients and providers. We're proud to specialize in patient health and happiness at hpcspecialtypharmacy.com or call 1-800-757-9192.